Hi there, so today I have a really big juicy, um, sorry I'm just trying to fix this, I've got a really big juicy topic to discuss with you and it's a question that I'm going to answer that I get a lot which is how big of a house extension can I build without needing planning permission? And so I get it, you're feeling really cramped at home, you're desperate for more space, maybe you want like somewhere that you can go and practice yoga in peace, um, away from the kids, maybe you want somewhere that you can go and hide yourself away, tuck yourself out of the way and get a bit of work done without being disturbed, or maybe you want a space for the kids where they can get all their toys out and make a big mess without it bothering you. So I get it, a lot of people are looking, especially now, well, we're all stuck at home and lots more stuff is happening at home. A lot of us are desperate for more space. So what can you do? How can you get more space without having to apply for planning permission? So before I get into that, I just wanted to say that actually getting planning permission is not that hard. Um, you don't need to restrict yourself to permitted development limits. Um, you can go and get planning permission to do what you really want. It's not so difficult to do that. And how do I know that? Well, I know that because I have been working with homeowners now for over 10 years and I help homeowners to make their homes more spacious, make them easier and more comfortable living to live in and more planet friendly. So. Um, I've also had around 20 years experience of applying for planning permission for projects and in that time I've only had about two applications which were either looking like they were going to be refused or were refused and we managed to get the, the projects compromised version but more than would have been possible just under permitted development rights so we managed to get approval for for close to what they wanted in those cases either through negotiation with the planning department or through appeal so you don't have to limit yourself just to what is possible with permitted development but if you do want to limit yourself to what's possible i'm going to go into that what what is possible so first of all what are permitted development rights. So they are what you're allowed to do without having to have planning permission, basically. So they're, they're a bit complicated, there are quite a lot of detail into it and I'm just going to talk about what you can do with a single storey rear extension. How big of a single storey rear extension can you build? So that's, that's basically what I'm going to limit this to. Maybe I'll go into another time or if you've got any specific questions about it, please pop them in the comments below and I'll either take those questions and create a new video for you or I'll, I'll deal with them in, in a response. So lots of homeowners come to me and they say, well, we just want to extend the full width of the back of the house and go out into the garden by about three metres. And that's basically the limit of permitted development for most cases where it's not a detached house. So for a detached house, the limit is four meters and for a non-detached house, like a terrace house or a semi-detached, then it's three meters. And you can do that without applying for planning permission, but you do have to have building control approval. You, you're not completely free of any statutory controls. You might not need planning approval, but you do have to get building control approval. But the thing is, I've seen lots of extensions that sort of size, where the homeowners are, are left with like dark, unusable spaces, and they're not able to really benefit much from that extra space, because it's not really been designed very well. And it's not really, it's just been a box, a three metre by eight metre, say, box tacked onto the back of the house. And the way that that extra space works with the existing house hasn't really been very well thought through. And so 
even if you don't apply for planning permission, you do want to make sure that that extra space that you're getting is well designed and it's going to work for you. Otherwise, there's no point. So, so basically, permitted development, as I said, it's four meters full width um, to a detached house and three meters full width to either a terrace or a semi-detached house. But you need to be careful because there are lots of exemptions, there are lots of exceptions, and you need to know where you're measuring from. So it's not the case that you can extend from the furthest back bit of your house and you can add on an extra three meters or four meters. That's not the case. It's a, an extra three or four meters from the principal part, the main body of the house and of the original house. So you can't just add on another three meters or four meters onto an extension to the original house. Or if you've got a bit of a lean-to bit or an outrigger, say on a typical on a terrace house, you can't extend back from the back of that. It's from the main body of the house. So, so that's where you've got to measure from. And second, that, so that's the first thing, the measurement is going to be um, the key thing. And the second thing is that there are lots of exemptions to where you're allowed to have these permitted development rights. So a local planning authority can sort of, sort of just because they'll have gone through a massive consultation process, but you might not have heard of it about it and you might not have had the chance to take part in it. But they will have gone through a consultation process and they may have created their own local guidelines and, and decided what the limits are about what you're allowed to do. So there are two places in particular that I'm aware of that I've been doing some work and that's Farnham in Surrey and um, Trafford in Greater Manchester. Both have really quite strict guidelines and requirements that limit what you're able to extend, how you're able to extend your home in those areas. And that's because the local planning authority has set those limits and so your permitted development rights do not apply in those places and there will be other places. Those are just two examples. And other places where the permitted development rights don't apply are in greenbelt areas, conservation areas, even if you're sort of within the context of an important historic or listed building locally, then you may also be limited. Also, areas of special scientific interest. That might be because there's some kind of particular wildlife in that area and your extension might impact on that wildlife. So the, in these situations, you, you might not even be aware of this. So I always recommend that at very early stage, you go and speak with your local planning department and just check if you have got permitted development rights or not and what, what they are, if there are any limits at all that are specific to your area. So um, the, you're going back to 1995 when the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order was first created and that was amended um, in 2015, which has been the most recent sort of standing version. Um, and then in 2018, that was amended and there was a temporary increase to the size of permitted development for domestic extensions, for, particularly for the real rear single storey extension. And that in 2018, that temporary extension was made permanent. So what does that extended permitted development means? So it means that instead of only being allowed to extend four meters back for a detached house or three meters back for any other house, you are now allowed to extend by, back by eight meters for a detached house and six meters for any other type of house. However, there is a big but that is subject to neighbor consultation. 
And what that means is that you do have to apply for extended permitted development. You can't just build it. So the four metres for detached or three metres for other, you can just build that. You don't have to get planning permission to do that. Be, aware, be careful about the fine details that are other details that you need to be aware of, such as the height of that extension and other bits and pieces. But, but the basic floor print, the size that you can build out from, four metres for detached, three metres for an, a, another type of dwelling, not flats. That's changed recently. I'll get onto that a bit later. Um, but if you want to, you can build eight meters back for a detached house and six meters back for any other house but you have to apply for that extended permitted development right um, and so the, this is because of neighbor neighbor consultation the consultation um, is basically your democratic right it's a good thing i know it sometimes doesn't feel like a good thing but it's a good thing because it's something that gives you and everybody the right to object or support any proposal for any building work that is going to impact on you in some way and so you have that democratic right to write to the planning department when you see that there's a proposal um, a, a, an application has been made you can write to the planning department and, and express your objection that you're not happy with it, it's going to affect you negatively in this way, this way, this way, or you can write a support um, in support of that proposal because you're happy it's going to happen, there are things that are going to affect you positively, and perhaps it's something that you might want to do in the future and you want to help make it possible that you know lead the way that where you may then be more likely to be allowed to do that too so um that's that's really all i'd say about neighborhood conservation a bit of a side issue but i think it's important to consider that to be a positive thing that everybody gets a chance to have a say even if it doesn't feel very nice when people object to your proposal um it's just that it's their right to do that and then recently, just a few weeks ago, at the end of June 2020, um, there were some further amendments made to that 2015 order. And then mostly they're affecting businesses to help them deal with the whole coronavirus situation. Te it's a temporary um, ability for certain businesses like restaurants to operate as takeaways, basically. Um, and so they have temporary permitted development rights to change the way that they use the building just to enable them to continue in business during the pandemic. Um, but it does also have some things that affect residential work and it, it particularly it impacts things like demolitions and conversions of some building types into residential use and that might not affect you at all if you're a homeowner and you're thinking about how big you can extend your own home but if you're you know got some ambitious plans for your own eco home build or something like that then this might represent some opportunities for you in terms of what property you might be able to now buy and convert or de demolish and re rebuild something else in its place. Um, it mainly doesn't affect, the, the latest changes don't affect much um, domestic, like single home domestic work. It might do if you have a flat in there, there are some changes that are related to flats and I know that some people, particularly if you own a large Victorian home with a big basement, you might have split off your basement and made that into its own um, little kind of flat that you let out perhaps, you know, different situations like that. And that may, then may affect your, your ability to um, extend. I'm not looked into the detail on that in because it doesn't, it's not really very relevant to most people. But um, there may be some some differences in that in what's permitted for you in that case. Um, it does affect sort of minor roof details. Things like overhangs are now not um, considered really to be, you know, if you overhang by a bit, 
but it's not considered that that is the extent of your extension so i don't know what the exact amount so if you want to do a sort of a nice big overhang so you can create a bit of a, a you know a, a seating space at the back of your house where you can sit outside when it's warm but it's maybe raining a little bit that's um i'm not sure exactly what the amount that you can overhang your roof is but a sort of minor roof details don't contribute to that limit of what how big you're allowed to extend and another key thing that has been brought in because because like i said these sort of typical um extensions that go back do often limit the amount of light that you're getting into the center of your home and that makes them a bit dark and unpleasant and so there is a new thing that has been put into these latest amendments these 2020 amendments and that is to say that there must be adequate natural light to all habitable rooms and that means rooms for sleeping and living in it doesn't mean kitchens bathrooms corridors utility rooms you know all the service kinds of rooms where you're not going to be spending well maybe your kitchen you might actually consider that more of a living room but in terms of the um order it's not it doesn't count in, in that way like a somewhere that you might sleep and hang out and spend time and living that's where you have to have adequate natural light now it doesn't specify what adequate natural light means but there are lots of um, best practice for considerations for natural light so that may may be referred to i've not looked again in detail at what this means the late the latest changes that literally just happened um but i just want to to remind you that i said earlier it's not that difficult or expensive to get planning permission for what you actually want so don't limit yourself to permitted development if that's not going to suit you um but you know why would you there, there are some good reasons why you would limit yourself to permitted development and there is basically only i think really one good reason why you would do that and that's time because it takes 8 to 13 weeks to get planning permission and if you go to appeal or you're involved in negotiations then it can take longer than that so if you want to take advantage of the extended planning permission then you still need to submit an application and so it's still going to take some time um, the presumption is in your favor but if you get a lot of neighborhood objections then you're not likely to get approval and the application process is very similar to a standard householder planning application it does take a little bit less time but not loads less time so so really without applying for planning permission you can extend four meters back for a detached house three meters for any other house if you want to make an, an application and get an extension you're not going to then benefit from the time saving that that sticking within pg limits gives you but you can then get bigger bigger space um and then the cost of a standard full planning full householders application it's usually around £200. It depends on the planning authority because they set their own prices. And also that doesn't, ex that doesn't include any architectural fees or any other specialist consultant fees that you might need to have to get you to that point. But there are other things that may also restrict the size of extension that you can do. And these are some of them. So there's shared drains where the water board is responsible for the drain that goes you know passes through your garden then in some instances building over that can be tricky or not possible often it's possible but um you know it's something that may restrict you another thing are tree roots especially if you're um if you've got some really beautiful big trees old trees that maybe they've got a tree protection order on them, then any extension that you do is going to have to be done in a way that's not going to damage them. And that then might limit the size of your extension or it might limit 
um, the type of foundations that you build with, which can increase costs. Maybe there are some rare species like newts or bats, and that could, if your extension would be likely to damage their habitat and um, affect them in any way, then that may limit the extension that you can do. And then of course, your budget. Obviously the bigger the extension, the more it's gonna cost, and so that may also limit your ability to build as big as you'd like. So I hope this has been really useful. Um, there's a lot of detail in there. There's a lot more that I could talk about. Planning is a huge, massive issue. There's so many things, so much detail to go into, and a lot of it comes down to interpretation. Um, but if this has been helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And um, if you've got any more questions, please pop them in the comments below and I'll come back and, and either deal with them or I'll use um, your comment to base a new video on in the future. Okay, goodbye for now. Nice to speak to you.